How's it going? The name here is my WWE NXT TakeOver New Orleans review. Of course, the show took place last month on the WWE Network during WrestleMania weekend, which I was there live for. So if you guys would like to go ahead and check out my NXT TakeOver New Orleans live review, um, it is on my channel, so go ahead and check it out if you guys would like before this video. And without wasting any time, let's go ahead and jump right into this video with my overall thoughts on NXT TakeOver New Orleans. What a fucking show this was. Honestly, this is not only one of the best TakeOvers, which it is one. It is the best TakeOver date, if you ask me. It is one of the best shows of all time. This show is absolutely perfect in my opinion. There isn't anything wrong with it. You know, every match was great. You had two amazing, fantastic matches. Uh, the rest of the card was great as well. Nothing bad on the show by any means. And it was, it was fucking great. I really enjoyed the show. You know, the three hours flew by. Every match, you know, felt like it had a purpose. I had a meaning to it. The stories behind them were great. Uh, you had a lot of great moments and just a whole lot of great wrestling in the show. This is just a tremendous show from NXT here. By far the best TakeOver special to date by far. One of the best wrestling shows of all time in my personal opinion. And uh, this is definitely a wrestling show that needs to be checked out by every wrestling fan. Because to me, um, like I said, it's one of the best shows of all time. This was just a phenomenal show here from NXT. And um, it's I don't think it's ever going to be topped uh, as best TakeOver special, honestly. Because it's, they're going to have the most loaded card history to uh, top this as best TakeOver. So... Yeah, just a tremendous show here uh, from NXT. Of course, the show opened up with a live performance with the intro video package. I thought it was great. You know, being there live, I thought it came off a lot better because it's, I, you know, watching it back, I felt like the audio of the band singing didn't come off that great. Uh, you're kind of just like watching, wondering what the hell they're saying. But I felt live, you actually, you know, you heard what they're saying more clearly. So I thought, you know, it didn't come off nearly as well on TV as it did live. But I thought the performance being played live for the uh, video package, I thought was great. Opening, you know, kind of. Uh, reverted back to WrestleMania 18's video package opening with you know band playing as well so um, I liked it, I thought it was cool which led into the opening match which was the ladder match to crown the inaugural NXT North American Champion of course you have EC3 taking on Killian Dane, taking on Adam Cole, taking on the Velveteen Dream taking on Lars Sullivan, taking on the debuting of Ricochet what a tremendous opener right here by far one of the best openers of all time and honestly in my opinion one of the best ladder matches of all time this had every element you needed to, in, in a ladder match, especially with six men in it. This epitomized, you know, a great multi-man ladder match because you had everyone in the match that looked like a legitimate star. Everyone got their stuff in. They all shine. There wasn't a dull moment in the match. There was continuous action. There was chaos absolutely everywhere in the ring. There was, literally, if you blinked, you missed a spot. That's how insane this match was. It was constantly going. There was not, you know, like I said, one moment where it was dull or they were taking a break. Everyone was continuously doing something, which a lot of, you know, multi-man ladder matches misses nowadays, you know, in my personal opinion. There was a point where everyone in this match legitimately seemed like they had a chance at winning. You legitimately thought everyone could have won at any time in this match. So when you have all those elements combined, you just had a tremendous ladder match with so many great spots. Um, it was just an absolutely insane ladder match. And honestly, like I said, you know, one of the best openers. And honestly, probably the best ladder match I've ever seen. It was just absolutely chaotic. And just, you know, the spots were insane. Right from the get-go, the first minute in the match, Ricochet hits a huge shooting star press on the outside and everyone, which is a tr uh, just an awesome spot right there. Uh, Lars Sullivan took everyone out at the ladder where he just chucked you know, the ladder in the ring and just took everyone out. EC3 and Adam Cole teamed up for a little bit, which led to Adam Cole turning on EC3 after EC3 kind of tried to take the glory. Uh, Adam Cole hit it, you know, a super kick party, uh, you know, which led to a phenomenal super kick when Ricochet, you know, did a springboard off the top rope. Adam Cole hit him with a super kick, which came off beautifully, followed by the Adam Cole Bay Bay chant. Uh, you know, Velveteen Dream was hitting elbow drops on every single person, which led to an elbow drop off the top of a ladder on the Lars Sullivan, which was absolutely insane. Uh, Lars Sullivan hit a freak accent off the ladder on Killian Dane, which, you know, the mo those two, Killian Dane and Lars Sullivan, had a such an awesome showing this match as well. Uh, one thing I really liked about this match was you had two monsters, you, you had two high flyers technically, and you had, you know, pretty much two uh, bona fide stars in Adam Cole and EC3. So you pretty much had, you know, two of everything, and I thought that really complimented this match as well. And just the spots were insane, you know, uh, Killian Dane, or not Killian Dane, sorry, Lars Sullivan hit a freak accident on the EC3 onto Velveteen Dream through a ladder that was on the announce table to the ring, uh, and then Killian Dane tried to up that by having Adam Cole, and pretty much just sat through Ricochet through the ladder uh, after the, uh, the freak accident th from EC3 onto the ladder on Velveteen Dream. Uh, those are just two awesome spots right there. Uh, you know, we had a lot of spots off the ladder, you know, there's a point where Ricochet was being tilted off the ladder and he actually countered that into a moonsault onto the outside, which is absolutely insane. Uh, just a lot of chaos, a lot of spots. Like I said, everyone looked great, you know, everyone got their stuff in. Everyone came off like a legitimate star, and that was, you know, the best part of this match, if you ask me. Uh, ending was great, you know, pretty much got to the point where we had three ladders, everyone's on top of it, everyone's knocking each other off one way or another. Uh, Velveteen Dream hit a, an awesome... 
um, Death Valley Driver onto the ladder on Ricochet. I thought came off great. Uh, Lars Sullivan was the only person left on the ladder, was climbing, but Ricochet springboard off the ropes and landed on top of Lars Sullivan, but the ladder actually collapsed underneath them, so the ladder actually broke down. Ricochet set up a new one, climbed it, Adam Cole came out of nowhere, took the ladder, Ricochet flew off, Adam Cole retrieves the NXT North American Championship and therefore is your first ever NXT North American Champion. Like I said, this ladder match was absolutely insane. There were spots everywhere, there's not a dull moment, like I said, if you blink you miss something. Everyone came off great, and honestly, this was just a perfect opener. And it got a lot of time, too. This got over 30 minutes, and it was tremendously fun. And, you know, being there live, I was thinking, like, they even said on commentary, too, like, this was the first match. Like, if the opening match is this insane, I can only imagine how great the rest of the card will be. So, yeah, Adam Cole, first serve NXT North American Champion. Like I said, phenomenal opening ladder match. From there, I'm going to go to the NXT Women's Championship match. Ember Moon defending against Shayna Baszler. Uh, Ember Moon had a pretty good entrance with her being sung to the... To the uh, to the to the ring, so she actually had a live performance, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, Shayna Baszler comes like such a star. Uh, she honestly does come off like a badass. So uh, the match itself was great. This was tremendously better than their uh, Takeover Philadelphia match. I felt like this match had a lot of great callbacks from that match. I thought the aggressive and just the vicious side of Ember Moon being shown here, where you know she actually fucked up Shayna Baszler's arm, or you know Baszler does the thing where she holds onto the foot and stomps on the elbow. Um, Ember Moon actually said that to Shayna Baszler, I thought it was a great spot, like I said, you know, calling back to what, you know, Shayna Baszler did to her back in Philadelphia. Uh, Ember Moon was just very, very aggressive in this match, and Shayna Baszler, like I said, came off a complete star. Uh, I love the spot of her just ramming her shoulder into the, uh, into the post to try and pop her shoulder back in the socket. I thought that was great, that's something different, and it definitely came off great on TV. Shayna Baszler on the outside, Ember Moon hits a huge eclipse onto the outside, onto Shayna Baszler, so that was an awesome spot. But um, was not able to get the pin in the ring. They actually just beat the count out, so I thought that was great. Uh, Ember Moon set up for the Eclipse again, but Shayna Baszler actually caught her into the Coquita Clutch, which I thought was great. Locked it in, but the one thing about the, the Clutch that made this spot great to me was, you know, Shayna Baszler hooks both arms, she holds it. But her arm was all messed up that she actually was pulling on her hair to lock in that submission. I thought that was such an awesome touch right there. It definitely added to the story of the match. So Shayna Baszler is pretty much, you know, locking Ember Moon. Ember Moon tried to do what she did in Philadelphia where she tried to roll up the pin, but Shayna Baszler was able to counter back into the submission to the point where Ember Moon passes out and Shayna Baszler is crowned your brand new NXT Women's Champion. Like I said, this was a great match here. Miles better than an NXT TakeOver Philadelphia match. The storytelling was great. The callbacks was great. And, you know, just the way Shayna Baszler came off in this match, she came off like a legitimate bona fide badass star. So uh, great, uh, you know, great great for her and uh yeah like i said great match there uh from there we're going to the 2018 dusty Rhodes tag team classic finals triple threat match for the nxt tag team championship of course the undisputed era being represented by kyle riley and adam cole for bringing future shock back for this match taking on roger strong and pete dunn taking on the authors of pain right from the get-go everyone's pretty much going out like it's a tornado match just chaos is everywhere everyone's beating everyone up uh authors of pain you know power bomb adam cole through the announce table so adam cole is out for the match after that uh kyle riley was the MVP of this match, if you ask me, he came off, you know, he, he worked so well on his own, whether it was him and Roderick Strong going at it, or the Authors of Pain turning him apart, I thought Roderick, or I thought uh, Kyle Riley definitely came off like the best person in this match, if you ask me, but after about five or six minutes of chaos, uh, I guess it turns into a regular triple threat match, where they start tagging in and out, the Authors of Pain uh, isolate Roderick Strong, or was it Kyle Riley? I don't remember, they isolated someone, and it came basically into like a regular triple threat tag team match. And um, it was pretty well done. I thought Archers of Pain looked pretty good. You know, Roger Strong and Pete Dunn definitely had some great, you know, teamwork in this match as well. Especially with Pete Dunn getting the hot tag, running rush shot over with Archers of Pain as well as Kyle Riley. Uh, Kyle Riley and Pete Dunn, just their interactions were great as well. This was a very fun uh, triple threat match. Like I said, everyone just, you know, looking good. And the finish was just awesome as well with, uh, you know, Roderick Strong hitting the assisted bitter end uh, with Pete Dunn on one of the Archers of Pain. But uh, they broke up the pin, and I think it was Razar broke the pin up. So Razar and, uh, or I don't know, one of the Lots of Pain broke it up, which led to the other one brawling with Roderick Strong on the outside. Roderick Strong threw him into the, into the steel steps to take him out. Uh, Kyle Riley tried to go off against Pete Dunne, but he went he went for the uh, the kick to the back of the head, which followed up with the elbow smash, but Pete Dunne countered into Nsiguri, which he followed up with the bitter end, and as he went for the pin for the 1-2, out of nowhere, Roderick Strong stomps the back of the head of Pete Dunne, lifts him up in the end of heartache, hits end of heartache, Throws Kyle Riley on top of Pete Dunne. Kyle Riley just looks absolutely lifeless. His body is not even moving. And one, two, three. The Undisputed Era retain the tag team titles. Roderick Strong turns heel, thus joining them. And Adam Cole miraculously wakes up at the very end of the match, which I thought was great. He was completely dead for the entire match. And as soon as the match ends, he's like, oh, I'm good. What happened? Uh, which I thought was just, like I said, I thought that was great. 
But uh, yeah, that was a phenomenal moment with Roger Strong turning heel. That was a perfect heel turn if you ask me. It was unexpected. It made perfect sense because they they made you, you know, the one thing that commentary needs to do is make sure you know why things make sense. And they made you, they made sure you knew why Roger Strong turned. From the very beginning, the Undisputed Era was targeting Roger Strong to join them. If you go back to NXT back in like October and September and stuff like that, they were trying to get Roger Strong to join them, which, you know, which is one of the reasons why we got War Games, because Roger Strong turned them down and teamed with Autos of Pain. So they made it known that this turn wasn't out of nowhere. And Roger Strong just, you know, picked his, you know, he picked a spot. You know, he chose a one tag team partner that, you know, Pete Dunne doesn't trust anyone. So for Pete Dunne to trust Roger Strong and team up with him, was a lot, and then the fact that Roger Strong pretty much turned on him, you know, thus giving him a reason to not trust anyone, uh, was great. And Roger Strong joined the Unsuited Era was great as well. Like I said, very fun match, amazing heel turn. Like I said, perfectly executed, unexpected, but it makes perfect sense. And uh, I thought thought it came off great. So, yeah, very fun match and made for an awesome moment at the end. From there, for, from there on, we go to the NXT Championship match. Of course, Andrade Cien Almas taking on Aleister Black one year ago. They were feuding in Aleister, or not feuding, but they had a match at NXT TakeOver Orlando in Aleister Black's debut match. A year later, they're going at it for the NXT Championship. Talk about a story right there. But the match itself, this was an awesome match. Um, Andrade San Almas is always on a different level in title matches. He just comes off a complete star, and his performances are just unparalleled with anything else. He just, he's so good. And Aleister Black is great as well. These two went out there and just tore the house down and had a tremendous NXT title match, if you ask me. Just the transitions, you know, just, you know, the... The athleticism from both men, just the spots they were doing were executing very well, the transitions, the counters, uh, just the grappling, the wrestling itself was just so well executed, and Zelina Vegas, uh, just, or Vega, I don't know why I call her Vegas for, uh, her role is just greatly done, you know, sometimes with these, you know, manager roles, the interference spots are just overdone, but she executes them so well, you know, she does the signature stuff where she does the, her grind to the steps, she did, she gave Officer Black a, a spike DDT once, you know, almost distracting the referee uh she just plays her role so well and you know it made for the great story because she did everything she possibly could to make sure you know almost retain the championship but at the end her assisting almost is what led to almost losing the championship so just the story of that in itself played greatly in this match and like i said both men did you know tremendous work you know almost did some great callbacks to her you know where he did the knees to the to the the head into the post which he did gargano at takeover philadelphia he hit the ddt or he went for the draping DDT, um, hammerlock DDT off the top ropes, which put Gargano and Drew McIntyre away when, you know, in his previous title matches. So he tried to do that. But Aleister Black was able to, you know, counter out of it every single time. Besides one time where he slid in the ring out and uh, almost hit it uh, very quickly out of nowhere onto Black at, for a great near fall right there. Aleister Black hit a black mask kick, which everyone thought that was it right there. But Zelina Vegas, for the third time, gets involved and puts almost his foot onto the, uh, onto the ring apron. Under the rope, sorry, to prevent the pinfall from happening. Uh, they have some more great, you know, work. Almost it's a double drop, uh, double foot stomp on Aleister Black onto the apron, which I thought was a great spot right there. Like I said, just had some tremendous wrestling and a lot of great stuff from both men. And the finish was absolutely spectacular with Zelina Vegas trying to get involved. Uh, she tried to just, I guess, hit a... Um, a crossbody on Aleister Black, but he was able to get out of the way. Uh... Uh, almost catches her, you know, to make sure she doesn't fall, but he turns around right into a black mask kick, uh, followed by the one, two, three, and Aleister Black is your brand new NXT champion. Like I said, amazing NXT title match here. I thought both men went out there and just tore the house down and had a tremendous wrestling match, and it was great. Like I said, the story with Zelina Vegas constantly getting involved and, you know, her interference, you know, trying to help Almost ultimately led to Almost losing. I thought it definitely played great as well, and um, yeah, made for a great moment with Aleister Black becoming the brand new NXT champion as well, so... Almost in black, tore the house down for a great match, but, you know, it was a match tonight still, if you ask me, but it was a tremendous NXT title match nonetheless. Uh, then we lead into the main event, which was the unsanctioned match between Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. Of course, if Johnny Gargano won the match, he'd be reinstated to NXT. Uh, right from the get-go, Ciampa's entrance was just absolutely insane. Um, just the booze and the fuck you Champa and you know you suck chant just was absolutely insane. It was one of those atmospheres where you're just like wow this is fucking crazy. And then Gargano comes out to a huge ovation, and these two go out there and just have a fucking fight to the finish. These guys went almost 40 minutes of them brutalizing each other, telling a phenomenal story with nothing but callbacks, uh, which were just played tremendously. You had a lot of insane spots where you know they fought into the crowd and you know Champa you know opened up the uh, took the padding off the floor so the concrete exposed. He gave Johnny Gargano a suplex off of the announce table, which I thought was insane. Uh, Gargano gave him a power bomb onto the concrete off the apron, which was just the moment you heard that thong, it was just 
ugh, you cringe and you just you got chills because that's how just ugh, it was it was disturbing to see. I mean, he fucking deserved it, uh, but it's still you know it was chilling to see. Um, and just in the ring, you know, Gargano, you know, just or not Gargano, sorry, Champa, just getting the crutch from somebody and trying to use it on Gargano, doing the thing where he lifts his head up, where you know, going back, calling back to the Chicago match where AOP used a ladder to lift up Champa. Before they smashed into the Gargano, he tried to recreate that spot with, you know, Gargano, but Gargano got out of the way before he hit him with the, with the crutch. Gargano nails him in the face with the crutch, so that was absolutely insane. Um, Gargano, you know, Champa hit Project Champa several times, Gargano, which even won from the top rope, which, you know, Gargano still kicked out of because he's fighting for his career, so he was literally kicked out of everything, which was absolutely insane. Um, like I said, just the storytelling and just the callbacks from, you know, pretty much the year worth of stuff they've done, whether it was at Chicago or Champa, you know, costing Gargano in his away. Uh, this this was, this match epitom, epitomizes a perfect a perfect wrestling match, if you ask me. It had the emotion from both guys, whether you hated Champa or loved Gargano, you were emotionally involved into it some, in some capacity. The crowd was absolutely insane for it. The wrestling was great everything they did meant something. They weren't doing spots for the sake of doing spots. They were doing it because it meant something to their story. Just everything about this match was literal perfection, honestly. If you, I could recommend one match for someone to get into wrestling with, this would be the go-to, honestly. It was literally perfect. And you have to watch the video package as well as the entrances too to really make this thing perfect. And uh, it played out tremendously. You know, Gargano, or Champa hitting, you know, the DIY finisher on, on Gargano, trying to put him away, which didn't work. And... You know, the finish with Gargano or Champa taking the, the the knee brace off and Gargano hitting his injured knee. And then, you know, Champa pleading for mercy and Gargano trying to recreate the Cruiserweight Classic spot from two years ago where, you know, Champa refused to put Gargano away. And then, you know, that's what ended up costing the match was him refusing to put Gargano away. And then, of course, they had the moment where they both sat in the ring and hugged each other. Gargano tried to recreate that with Champa, but Champa tried to uh, hit Gargano with a knee brace. You know, tried to you know capitalize on the opportunity, but Gargano ducks, puts him in the Gargano escape, uh, isn't working. So he actually applies an STF where he takes the knee brace and puts it across his face, pulling him back. You know, yanking it, and uh, Champa just immediately taps out, and Gargano wins in a fucking war. This was a tremendous match, and they didn't even bleed once, and they put on an amazing, fantastic, you know, pretty much street fight. So Gargano Champa. Like I said, in my personal opinion, a perfect wrestling match. It was just, in terms of story and everything, maybe entering wise wasn't perfect, but just every element possible you could add to it was perfect, if you ask me. And uh, it was just a phenomenal win in the show with Gargano winning. And uh, it was just one hell of a fight with one hell of a show, like I said. And overall, I thought NXT TakeOver New Orleans is by far one of the best wrestling shows of all time. Best of the best TakeOver. The opener was fucking amazing. Uh, you know, great NXT Women's title match. The NXT Tag Team title match was really, really good. Amazing NXT title match and a fantastic main event. Literally, everything you can ask for to show was here. Nothing bad, nothing filler, everything had a purpose. Almost every match had a great moment, you know, that make you remember the match. So, NXT took over New Orleans, like I said, one of the best shows of all time. Bestly, by far, the best show I've ever been to, honestly. I can't name a better show I've been to than NXT TakeOver New Orleans. This is a phenomenal show. I'm so from south to bottom and uh yeah i loved every, absolutely every second of it i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys did please like below and of course until next time i'll see you guys then thank you guys for watching the video Ooh,